Hi folks, in language arts, one of the most difficult things about writing is trying to describe things. When I am sitting with students and they're asked to do a prompt or asked to write a write from a prompt or whatever, or tell something about what they did, they say, I, I don't know what to say. And so oftentimes because they feel like they can't describe it. Like, for example, if they go to the store, they just think, I'm going to the store. If I drove down the road, rode down the road, I rode down the road. There's nothing there that allows them to think that they can tell more. And so whenever students are writing stuff, it can be, that can be the one thing that stops them. Besides the fact they just don't like to write, period. I mean, there's, you know, I know, I know you're out there. You know what? I don't want to write. I'd rather play basketball or football or video games. Anyway, the fact is, though, that description and detail is not only a part of writing, but it's a part of the reading process. We have seen in 10 Star a whole lot of description. In fact, you might even think, when will the guy finally find his wife? You know, you're, you're thinking in the back, how many more diversions does he have to go through? Well, it's a story. And it's a descriptive story. And most, all stories are a little different. Some stories are light on the description and other stories are very detailed. We're looking at a very detailed description. There are other books, if you look at it, it's more about Joanne said to Julie, hi, how you doing? Where's Joe at? And Julie responds by saying, okay, I always forget names. Uh, I, uh, he's gone, to, uh, he's gone to the store. I mean, there isn't a lot of detail involved. It's some conversation. Oh, we drove down the road. It's a beautiful sunny day. The trees are flying and, and, and they're looking very pretty. You know, it's not a lot. This reading gives you, it seems like every single detail. <coughs> Excuse me. So what do we look at? I'm going to go back to 91, the book. I'm going to read a paragraph. Okay, we've already read this earlier. If you watched earlier today, we've already read this. So please bear with me, but there's a reason for reading. Let's read this first paragraph here. It's on page 91. Luke cautioned himself to patience. Nelson would make a mistake and he'd have him. But now hard would, how, but how hard would it be getting him to spill his guts about Benedict about, and about the woman who had bailed him out the night before? The gang and the woman must be connected in some way. Okay, there is just, I won't say conversation, but he's sharing his thoughts with you. He's sharing his thoughts with a reader. Not a lot of description there, just simply, this is what I'm thinking. All right? A very superficial surface writing, which probably most people are accustomed to. Then he goes, Nelson reversed course and bolted for the buckboard. Luke rose to his knees and started firing. Every shot missed. Nelson flopped into the mud by the buckboard during, during, during Luke to come for him. So you're starting to see a little more, right? Watch what he said here. Nelson reversed course and bolted for the buckboard. Okay, now you've got Nelson running to another side. Right? And then Luke rose to his knees and started firing. A little bit more description there. He stood up. He started firing. And then, what's he say? You got a little pause where he's saying, patience, he whispers to himself. He broke open the six-shooter and reloaded. He'd had a chance and muffed it. Then a different tidbit of wisdom came to him. He started toward the shed. If he got inside... He might swap Nelson's livelihood for the information he required to find Audrey. Now, again, he's pondering this. He's thinking about it. Not a lot of detail, but giving you more information. So, as you can see, sometimes you could just be, you know what? Uh, we were down there the other day, and it just didn't work out too well. But hopefully I'll see him on Saturday. And on Saturday we can talk a little more. A general, just a, just general explanation that's part of writing 
But here comes more detail, right? All right. You can't go there. You can't. Nelson shouted in rage when he realized Luke's strategy. I'll burn it to the ground and everything in it. Tell me what I want to know and I'll leave you alone. Now, that was what got Luke's attention. Again, this is that's much more direct dialogue. There's no trying to describe the situation. There's no trying to get you to figure out what's he doing. He's simply directly saying, hey, you got a choice. If you want this to stay here, talk. Everyday stuff. You, well, not every day. We don't get into conversation like that every day with people. But you know what I'm saying. It's very, pretty direct. But then a little later on, he goes out. He's, he's talking. Yeah, I won't, I won't turn the page. He says, I want to know where Rhodes is. So this is more of the back and forth that they're having, right? Yeah, he paid me pretty penny. So he's, yeah, I paid me pretty penny. This is page 92. Uh, I ain't never seen Rhodes, but Benedict talks about him all the time. Nelson sagged even more. You won't let me deliver to him now, will you? So this is just real talk between two people. Not a lot deep. Not a lot of deep description. There's not any deep description. But then notice. Luke shifted his attention to the rider. Now he that's when they recognized um Bandit coming. And what happens? The outlaw began firing, but not Luke or Nelson. Every round tore up a bit of the buckboard. Then he hit the jackpot and bullet, slammed into a crate of dynamite and detonated. The shock wave lifted Luke off his feet and threw him into the ditch. A second explosion rolled uh, rolled above him, but he was deaf and stunned and could not appreciate how powerful the blast was. After a few seconds, he shook himself and got to his feet. His knees almost buckled. His He lifted his gun and tried to find Bandit, but the outlaw was long gone. The only evidence of handiwork lay in a deep black crater. There you have it. He's They've gone deeper in description. Giving you and I an understanding of this guy, Bandic, has taken a gun and shot at the explosives. And those explosives have, have exploded and they have been tossed in different directions. So you're getting a picture of what is happening. Descriptions that are detailed and give you information lead to pictures in your mind. You can see it. You can visualize it. I went to the grocery store. I went in and saw the black wall and saw the corner where all the uh, shelves were. And I saw boxes lining up the shelves. And I saw print on those boxes. The more you give description, the more you allow the reader to be a part of what you're writing about. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead. He's already got, we already know what happened. I'm going to turn the page. And go to 94, page 94. And I'm going to give you a little more description. Just a little more description. Don't you go bleeding on my floor. I just watched it. Luke Hadley stirred. The slightest movement sent waves of white pain glancing through him. To make matters worse, the town doctor had stitched up some deep cuts. Going to the town seamstress would have been given a better result. He flexed his arm. Then he balled his fingers into a fist. The stitches pulled and tore at his flesh, but he wasn't bleeding around any of the undamaged sutures. The doctor began wrapping them up with white cotton strips. He sewed better than he wrapped. So even there, there is more description, more explanation. He is taking every little step. It'd be like riding your bike. Let's say you're riding your bike. You could either say, I'm riding my bike to the store. You could say that. Or you could say, my fingers were on every part of the metal. They were ready to push. They were ready to pull. They were uh, they were pushing me up. They were letting my legs get close to the um, what, pedals. And as I started to pump, as I started to push, as I started to pump harder and push harder, my bike was moving faster and faster. See, that's where you're giving description. You're just on your way to the store, but you're making it so that you and I can be right there understanding what you're doing. So if you're writing about just going to the store, I rode to the store. That's a plain, simple, I won't rode to the store. But the more you're describing the event, 
I, my fingers were grappling against the handlebar, handlebar. My fingers were pressing and my, the cold sweat of my face was coming down and dripping onto my fingers. More description, more understanding of what you're doing. My legs pumped, my legs pushed, my legs continued to huff and puff. I continued to huff and puff as I was riding along. Oh, that store looked so far away and yet it was not that far away. See, I can write to make it so that it's simply, I have to say, I went from point A to point B. In this story, all you had to do was say, I was with a, with, with a, uh, the doctor and he packed me up. That's all he had to say. I went to him, he fixed me up, I was all, all ready to go. He could have said that and when told us the same thing, except he wanted us to see and experience and maybe even feel what he's going through, just like if you're going to that store and you're on your bike and you're pumping that, pumping your legs, you want us to know that you put real effort into it. This wasn't just a ride to the store. I hopped and I pumped and I pushed and I exercised and I made it to that store in 10 minutes. It would normally would take me five or 15 or 20, 25, <laughs> whatever it meant is. The point is this, in this story, the guy could have easily said, Luke could have just said, I went there, I got patched up, and now I'm out looking for the next adventure. Well, he doesn't say that. He goes in great detail. Luke, the slightest movement sent waves of white pain lasting through him. He wants you to know what he's dealing with. The writer wants you to know what he's dealing with. Description, detail. Description, detail. All a part of how to write. All a part of what you're reading. All a part of understanding what you're reading and be able to put into and you can also put into words what are you seeing in this story how is he suffering is luke suffering so it gives more depth and meaning to the story than just saying he went here he went there i hope that makes a little bit of sense to you thanks for watching